welcome back guys. We're so excited to do the prodigal son part two in finding holy for NBC kids. Before we get started today, I had asked you guys to draw me a picture of your favorite part of your community. So uh, you guys have this form in your activity kit and you'll go ahead and draw a picture of your favorite part of your community. And I did ask these three if they would share with us the favorite part of their community. So go ahead, Danica. Mine is on the stage at church. What happens on the stage at church? We have, we sing and we do worship. Awesome. How about for you, Max? My favorite part is the kind people around town. And I drew a man feeding a homeless man bread. Awesome. How about for you, Say? Um, mine is the church. I love it. And I drew a picture of some friends because I love just being with people in the community. That's my favorite part. So I'm interested to find out what your favorite part is. And today, in part two of The Prodigal Son, we're going to see where the son actually changes his ways and is welcomed by his father. So we look forward to sharing that message with you guys today. Hi guys, how's it going? Good. 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 Did you guys have your first week of school? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what you guys did at school this week. I uh, play homework. Homework. Lots of homework? Mm -hmm. What was your favorite part? Uh, when I got to make a bed. You got to make a bed. Was that a craft? Uh-huh. It was made out of paper. Cool. Levi, what was your favorite part? The coloring part. You got to do some coloring? Mm -hmm. Where you fill out up the boxes are the numbers. Filling out boxes with the numbers, that's great. The uppercase and the lowercase. Oh wow, Levi is learning uppercase and lowercase. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Keaton, what was your favorite part of school? Uh, uh, playing. Playing? That sounds like fun. Oh, oh. A few moments later. Can you help us with our Bible verse this week? Yeah. All right, repeat after me. The Lord is not slow. The Lord is not slow. In keeping his promise as some understand. In keeping his promise as some understand. Instead, he is patient with you. Instead, he is patient with you. Not wanting anyone to perish. Not wanting anyone to perish. But wanting everyone to come to repentance. But wanting everyone to come to repentance. Second Peter. Second Peter. 319. 319. This means that God is patient. What does it mean to be patient, Selah? Uh, uh, what about waiting our turn? Uh-huh. Yeah. How about waiting for things that we really want? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for your help today, Sayla. What do you have there? A bird nest that I'm making. Excellent. Hi, it's Ashley here. Thanks for joining us for our second week of Finding Holy in the Suburbs. We're continuing our story this week with the second part of the prodigal son. So we're gonna start with reading our scripture. So if you have your Bible with us, uh, turn to Luke chapter 15, verse 11. So it says, Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the, son, the younger son got together all that he had and set off for a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything he had, there was a severe famine in the whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomachs with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. 
I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired men. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still long away, his father saw him and he was filled with compassion for him and he ran to his son and he threw his arms around him and he kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, quick, bring the best robe and put him in it. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. And when he came near to the house, he could hear the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what is going on? Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf and he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all of these years I've been slaving for you. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered all of your property, comes home to you, you kill a calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and now he is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. So today we're gonna to look at the son that got angry. We're looking at the son who stayed with him. And the Bible tells us that he was the older brother. So he was loyal to his father. He obeyed his father and he stayed and he stayed doing the hard work with his father. He did the farming. He worked in the fields just as his father did. And the father says, but everything that is mine is yours. See, the younger son, he was ready to get out of there. He wanted his inheritance and he wanted to split and explore the world. But look where that got him. That got him with nothing. He had nothing to show for it. He spent all his money. All his friends left him. And then he had to come back to his father, begging him for a job just to feed pigs like his hired servants because he felt that that's all that he was worth. The older son angry and frustrated because the father says that he forgives him. He kills the fattened calf. They have a party, you guys. This is like a party amongst all parties. Have you ever been to a wedding reception? A really fun one where there's dancing and there's music and people are having a good time. Well, that's what this was like because the father was celebrating his son coming back. He was celebrating his return because see, the father gave his son his inheritance, and he would have never seen his son again after that. But because the son squandered his inheritance and didn't have anything to show for it, he was at the mercy of his father to even hire him as a hired servant. The son needed his father. The other son, the older brother, he obeyed his father. He did the right things. He was the good child. And you know what? He still sinned against the father too because he got angry at his dad for loving on his brother. And here the father is saying, wait a minute, you are both my beloved children. I love you both so much that I would do anything for you. And that's exactly what he did because he celebrated the son that returned and then he said to his other son, but everything I own is yours. You guys, this is what God is like. We are his beloved children. He loves us 
immensely. I can only imagine that when somebody becomes a new believer, that they are just celebrating. God is celebrating. Jesus is celebrating. It's like a giant party. They are so excited because their children, us, we are created in God's image. We are returning to him when we decide to follow Jesus. And that's what's happening in the story of the prodigal son. We all need forgiveness, just as this story says. The good son, he needed forgiveness. The bad son, he needed forgiveness. Because you guys, it's not about good and bad. It's about being obedient and following God and doing his will. And I know that's super duper hard. Did you know that every day we sin, we make mistakes all the time? But that's why God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Because we are forgiven. There is nothing that we can do that will separate us from God's love. We could be like the worst human being on planet earth. And God will still love us. And he forgives us because the blood of Jesus was shed for each and every one of us. So I want you to remember that as we go off into our day, maybe we have a fight with a sibling, maybe we're disobedient to mom and dad. Just remember that God calls us to love and obey our parents. That's a commandment that we are given. But also when we break those commandments, we are forgiven. And so we have to go and we have to confess our sins before God. And we have to say, you know what, God, I know I messed up. I know I did this that was wrong, but will you forgive me? And guess what, you guys? He does. The grace of Jesus is what forgives us, his saving grace. So will you bow your heads and close your eyes with me tonight? We're going to close in prayer. God, we thank you for being the God in heaven. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. So no matter what we do, we are forgiven and we can continue to be united with you. We just thank you for creating us and for creating us in your image and for creating us to be in relationship with you. But God, we also recognize that we are sinners, whether we're the good son, the bad son, the good daughter, the bad daughter. You know what, God, we are all sinners. There's no label of good or bad. We know that we are sinners, but we know that you love us, we are your beloved. And because of that, you forgive us and your love for us is unconditional. So we thank you for that. And we just come before you laying our sins down at your feet, Father. And we just are saying that we are sorry and we're asking for forgiveness. Thank you for each and every one of us that's here tonight, that we get to come together, Lord, and read your Bible freely, that we get to take your word and hide it into our hearts, because that's something that no one will ever be able to take away from us. And so we thank you for that. In your son's name we pray, amen. Well, you guys, there's some fun activities planned for tonight, and I hope that you guys have a great week and social distancing at school is going well. And we will see you guys next week.